being hit once in a relationship is one time too many. I am Fiona Harewood, author, speaker, and life coach. As I mentioned in my last video, my book, River Never Smooth, Reclaiming Power After Abuse, contains some calls to action via pull quotes, some of which I'll be using to empower you to help yourself and your friends or loved ones who may be experiencing the issues described in the calls. In the last video, I posited that we should call out problems as they occur in our relationships instead of waiting for bad behavior to be repeated. Remember to bear 1 Corinthians 13 in mind even as you navigate issues in your relationship. We're told among other characteristics that love does not behave rudely. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and the list goes on. If that's not what you're experiencing in your relationship, start making plans to do better. Now we'll move on to the second call to action. Love yourself enough that the first time you're hit in a relationship, God forbid, would be the last time. You are the only one with the power to prevent this behavior from devolving into a chronic pattern. You demonstrate your power by seeking help from a trusted family member or relative with whom you have a close relationship getting professional help from a counselor or life coach, choosing to walk away, or by calling the cops, although this should be a last resort. There are several ways to prevent abuse even before it starts. One way is by setting boundaries in your relationship and being sure to act if those boundaries are violated. You may recall that I mentioned the beating I received as the present for my third wedding anniversary. I remember coming to on the hardwood floor in our living room. Excruciating pain shot through my body as I struggled to pull myself up. When I finally made it to the mirror, I could barely recognize myself. My eyes were swollen and my face was black and blue in some areas. Dried blood stained the front of my shirt, blood that had undoubtedly oozed from my puffy lips and lacerated forehead. Never allow situations to get this far. If your partner is abusing you, Seek help before it's too late. You think that I would have left the relationship after the beatdown I received, right? Wrong. I didn't leave when I should have, and that's why I'm alerting you. Even though I moved out temporarily, five weeks to be exact, I went right back. Of course, we all know by now that returning to an abusive relationship is hardly the right thing to do. Physical abuse is only one form of abuse. It is intentional bodily injury and must never be tolerated. It includes shoving, choking, shaking, slapping, punching, biting, kicking, throwing objects, scratching, pulling the hair, and grabbing. When you love yourself, if you're hit once in a relationship, you don't allow yourself to be hit a second time. Looking back, I didn't love myself enough, so I tolerated repeated physical abuse. But I learned eventually, 
After being beaten down repeatedly in my first marriage, I vowed that I would not allow another man to hit me. So at the beginning of my second marriage, I set those boundaries, making it clear to my then husband that if he ever hit me, there would be consequences. When I told him that, and it may sound weird, I didn't even have a plan. What I did know was that if I was ever hit again, there would be trouble. One night, he either forgot my directive or he underestimated me. It was almost midnight when I returned from an overseas trip. I had taken my children to Guyana where they would be spending the Easter vacation with my parents. I was jet lagged, but he wanted to have sex. We did, and it was fun. I fell asleep, but the next thing I knew, he was waking me up to have sex again. Not even an hour later, I told him I was tired and needed to be at work early the next morning, but he would have none of it. He started forcing himself on me. I resisted and managed to make it out of the bed and into the children's room. But he caught up with me before I could close the door. He threw me onto the children's bed, slapped me repeatedly, and raped me. Yes, that was marital rape. I felt dirty and violated. He went back to sleep, but I was wide awake for the rest of the night. I lay next to him, plotting. He probably didn't give the incident a second thought, but after work the next evening, I showed up at our home accompanied by eight police officers to get my clothes. I didn't move out permanently. I stayed away for about a week. That was the first and last time he hit me. However, I did go back. That's a big issue. What happened after that? Because of other significant problems, I eventually left permanently. Those other problems could have been avoided had I walked away earlier. Sometimes we want to give people a chance. I know. For the most part, situations only calm down for a while, but the abuser returns to his or her old habits. I would say this, unless you receive divine intervention like I did in my current marriage and your partner makes a 180 degree change, you may be better off starting over. Going back also makes it harder to leave again because the abuser would be more alert and in a better position to thwart your plans. I praise God for the wonderful man to whom I am now married, a man who has never hit me regardless of how intense our arguments became. His mother's influence has guided his decisions. He would rather walk away than inflict physical pain. One of the best ways to ensure that you won't tolerate any form of abuse in a relationship is to be financially independent. Most victims stay in abusive situations because they don't work outside of the home and must rely on the abuser for financial support for themselves and their children. Guard against putting yourself in that situation. If you're already there, take the steps needed to make things better. Going back to school or developing a skill are just two of the options available. I have just shared with you some tips on how to deal with physical abuse in your relationship. Let's talk about them in the comments section. Also, remember to click the link in the description below 
to get a sneak preview of my new book, 24 Days Prayer to the Rescue series, coming in June. And you can click now on this video to see how to avoid toxic people. In my next video, I will be talking about gaslighting in relationships. Thank you and see you next time.